Welcome to this five beta mu legacy project interview. It is my privilege to bring to you today five beta mu Hall of Fame member Bill Bruner. Bill, how are you? I'm doing pretty well. How are you doing? I am fantastic. You know, it, it this is a real honor for me because as a as a student coming up through junior high and high school, growing up in Northport, Alabama, right across the river from the University of Alabama, I remember those Austin bands at state contests. And as a youngster wanting to be a band director, going out and hearing those bands, and you know, it it was a, a lasting impression. So I, I'd like to start out by just going back to the very beginning when you were a youngster. What, how'd you get into music? How'd you get your start? Well, I was in the high school. But, um, I actually started, I think, in about the third grade. Uh, Pasquale Brea, B-R-I-A. And he had a son named Vincent. You may have known him. But anyway, uh, he was a band director there at Coleman. And he started kids in the elementary school, uh, followed through on the, at the first, the, <laughs> there wasn't a junior high school to begin with, mm -hmm. but uh, then on into high school. And uh, that's how I got started. My, uh, my mother was a piano player. Uh, mm -hmm. She encouraged me to get into music. And my older sister was a, a clarinet player. And she was very good. So it just kind of followed that I go into, into the band. Yeah. And that's what I did. Fantastic. And followed Musical through family. on into high school. And of course, your band director, Mr. Bria, is also a member of the Phi Beta Mu Hall of Fame. So, is it Pasquala or Vincent? Pasquala. Okay. Yes. Yes. Great. Yeah. So yeah. That, that... I, 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 Jerry Countryman and I worked on those folks, the first ones that went in. And I guess I guess I had something to do with Mr. Brio going. Probably in. so. Kind kind of a way to pay him back for, um, yeah, the instruction and everything. And of course, obviously, he was a good teacher. So he was excellent. He was a a real musician. He mm -hmm. played bassoon. Uh, I'm thinking, trying to think what else he played. He played several different instruments. And at, uh, at one point, he had played uh, in movies. Where, back in those days, they had a movie, but then they had a live uh, orchestra or band to play the music while the music, while the movie was going on. And he also played in some, uh, I, I think he was basically in the Cincinnati area. Okay. But I, I'm sure there was an orchestra that he played in because he was really very good. Uh, very good is not a real enough, good enough description <laughs> to yeah. determine how good he was. Fantastic. And so now, at what point did you decide that you wanted to be a band director? Actually, I uh, was about the seventh grade. Right, that early. Wow. Teachers, okay. uh, I forget who it was now, wanted us to uh, write a, an essay or something on what we would like to be when we grow up and uh, so I thought about it and I thought about it I said I really like I think I'd like to be a band director 
I had gone to music camp nearly every summer from the seventh grade on. And one of my favorite people was Bodie Hinton. You remember Bodie? It was my mother's band director at really? Tuscaloosa High Tuscaloosa School. High. Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah. And um, gosh, am I getting that old? <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking, damn, I get that old. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, Bodie was one of the high school instructors that helped. And he happened to work with the, the horns, which I was playing horn. And uh, so I got to know Bodie pretty well. And he was just a great, a great guy, had a tremendous band, and he had an influence on me wanting to go into music. So I, with, with him and, and Mr. Brea together, I guess we'd say that both of them had a, an awful lot to do with it. Fantastic. And, and so University of Alabama? Yes. It's, I, I, thought, I thought that was, that was right, yeah. Uh, what are some of the memorable things from those days as, as far as, you know, things that influenced your career, good teachers that you had there at Alabama? Yale Ellis. Yale Ellis, yes. Yeah. Anyway, he was my horn instructor. He said, you know, we might ought to see about changing your embouchure. I was I was pretty good as I usually went to band camp and I was usually first chair mm -hmm. band camp. But uh, I did have a limited upper range. And so he said, Well, if you're gonna, you know, major in music, you we maybe we maybe we need to work on that upper range some. And, so he did, and we got some things done. He uh, talked to Colonel Butler, too, and see what he thought. And uh, so we just went from there, and uh, I had to go through some problems making that change as a player. Yes, uh, yeah. Because if, if, if you've gone through that, I don't know whether you had to go th through that or not. I hope not. But, uh, you know, you, you get to a certain point where you can usually play things and then all of a sudden you, you're limited what you can do. <laughs> so that, uh, that gave me some problems, but uh, we worked through it and uh, I got a little better before I graduated. <laughs> yes, yes. And so then that, that first job was... Um... Down in was it Mobile? Um, well, it was uh, it was close to Mobile. It's Viger High School. Viger, mm -hmm. and that's in Pritchard, fifteen miles I'd say north of Mobile. They had the the Viger High School band director apparently was dismissed for something, and um, I had just graduators like in the middle of the year uh, in, in December I sort of had two possibilities one was a, a middle school band director in Andalusia and uh, then he had this opening at Viger so I went ahead and took the high school job and uh as I said, it was not the greatest situation in the world because they had dismissed the head director. I started in uh, January, I guess it was. Mm -hmm. And then there was, you know, brand new band director, <laughs> about <laughs> the same age as the kids, not much older. Yeah, just a, a few. But some of them probably had brothers and sisters older than you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so... So anyway, we, you know, we had to work with the discipline thing and yeah. get to know them and them get to know me and what to expect. And I, I had to be kind of tough on them. And mm -hmm. uh, as you know, they didn't like it very much, but uh, we, we got through and we actually uh, 
they had the district contest in Mobile that first year, but I did not attempt to take them. Um, mm-hmm. I went and listened. And um, I, I think I learned a good bit by listening to other bands because later when I, when I went to Austin, uh, which the reason I ended up at Austin was I was from Coleman. I don't know whether you know where Coleman is in Alabama. Oh, yes. Yeah. And uh, about an hour north of where I am. Yeah. Yeah. Nice so, area, nice uh, community. And, and Mr. Brio was such a good teacher. I felt like I'd learned so much from him. And um, so it happened that the superintendent at uh, the new school up in Decatur, actually he was superintendent of the school of the system. He was a uh, had been a uh, administrator uh, in Coleman. So I knew him, actually had dated his daughter a couple of times and he knew me a little bit. So when I had my interview, uh, we kind of knew each other. And I think that was a little bit of an advantage for me. Austin was a brand new school and uh, I, I went ahead and took that job and we had to, I got to know Jerry Countryman really well. First, one of the first things I did was go over there and talk to Jerry and see what they did as far as extra lessons and, and so forth, section rehearsals and things and found out what they had done to be successful at the cater, and I duplicated. So um, we tried to do, we, we would have afternoon sectionals one afternoon a week for, for each section and the section leaders would lead their sections. Yeah. And, uh, then we would, uh, we would have about one that we would get everybody together. And uh, I usually took the clarinets because I I knew that if you're going to play any difficult concert music, your clarinets are going to have some substitute for violins. Violins, yes. And uh, so I really worked hard on the clarinet section and um, ended up, I ended up having two daughters that both played clarinet. <laughs> so go. I could teach them at home. <laughs> there, yeah. So Austin was a brand new school. So did did it split Decatur High? Did, did, was it Decatur High and then it split off? There was one, and, one school in Decatur mm-hmm. and it was on the east side. There's a highway, I think it was 65, that ran down the middle of Decatur the city of Decatur, and uh, they were on the east side, which is uh, closer to Huntsville on that side of Decatur. And uh, there were uh, lots of people that were working uh, at Huntsville that were, had doctorates and so forth because of the Mm-hmm. I think at first it was just the arsenal and then it developed in the space and rocket center. Uh, yeah. And uh, so I found out that the kids that usually did the best were usually pretty smart. <laughs> and, and uh, so I tried to kind of follow what he had done and what, uh, Doc Schwoko had done too. I don't think he was a doctor though, but uh, he was, you know, he was the first band director at, uh, in, at Decatur. 
Yeah, and and another Hall of Fame member. Yeah. I, I, I mean that area, and yeah. of course Jim Countryman also. Yeah. Uh, Hall of Fame member. I uh, was able to go to the three elementary schools. We would start in the sixth grade. We would start those that wanted to begin band. You know, after we have to have some. Uh, sessions for the with the parents and so forth right and for those that uh, indicated they wanted to be in band and uh you know we had a little uh i'm trying to think of the name of it you probably have done the same probably, thing probably that there was that that little selmer test yeah that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Whoever came up with, with that sure got a lot of mileage out of it because yeah. I, I know so many programs, um, yeah. you know, and, and you get that, you know, you get that letter in the mail that, that says how well you did on it. Have you ever thought about being in the band? And of course, I, I guess folks like you and me, we already knew we wanted to be in the band, but a lot of kids who really hadn't given any thought, sometimes oh, yeah. that was the thing that would, uh, um, you know, spur them on. So, um, so we, um, of course, would go to the elementary schools and have those tests and so forth and started uh, getting some people that wanted to start. And uh, so we would start them in the sixth grade. And I was able to get, oh, about six or seven students from Decatur High that had to move from Decatur. The superintendent made a move, I forget the reason, but I think they already lived in that side of town and they didn't much want to come and I didn't blame them. <laughs> <laughs> I, I knew that uh, they didn't want to be over there at Austin with uh, all those younger kids. But we had some that really ended up being a big help. Mm -hmm. Could help the younger kids, the seventh graders, and so forth, with things that help them to learn to behave, <laughs> and and so forth in a high school situation. So that worked out pretty well. Yeah, and um, so I guess the, those early years when Austin first opened. So you didn't have any seniors, juniors. So did it just start with junior high and then add a grade each year? We started and, with, with ninth grade. Uh -huh. Yeah. And, so so if you were already at Decatur High School, it, other than those few students, right. if you were already a 10th, 11th, you got to stay at Decatur and graduate from there. Right. Well, I say... I don't know whether all of them did or not. I know some that had to come to Austin didn't have any choice. <laughs> yeah, they were they were moved over there and they didn't particularly like it, and I couldn't blame them. They, yeah, they were yeah. there with a seventh grade group who couldn't play very much, and uh, they had played some pretty good music at Decatur High. Sure. You know, they, they went to state every year and they were ones every year. Mm -hmm. And uh, so anyway, uh, we made it through. And uh, I had some really good parents because I got a lot of those that came from, uh, uh, that worked at the arsenal and so forth. They were doctors and scientists and so forth and they had really sharp kids and uh so i was i was fortunate that uh, we had those kind of people to deal with the first year i asked the superintendent i said can i just go down and stay and listen to state contest for a week and I did, and I think I learned a lot because I heard so many different bands, 
and so many different things that were good about some of them that were bad about some of them. <laughs> And I, I think it had a lot to do with me developing uh, the band sound that I wanted. And uh, so went back and started teaching. And uh, I think we went about a year and we decided to go to district. And we went to district and doggone, we got through. And uh, we got through district. The kids, when we got back to school, they came and got me, picked me up, two or three of them picked me up and <laughs> went to the band room and they were all excited about it. So that was kind of how we got started with, with that. Mm -hmm. And we just uh, tried to go on from there. And, and uh, I think we went to, got to go to state a couple of years and made twos and uh, we just kept after it and finally we started getting ones yeah and, um, and, and that was back in the day where if you got a two that that was something to be proud of <laughs> yeah. just to get the state contest was an achievement right and if you got if you got a two you were you know that was okay you know yes and if you got a superior wow yeah, yeah, it took us a couple of years before we finally finally got there and we were able to keep it going. And I think I think Clay told me that uh, the last time we had our 55 years in a row with 57. superior ratings. And uh, wow. Clay Sloan is the band director now. Mm -hmm. You know Clay? I, I do, and of course, he he was assistant for for many many years, and then assumed the role of, of head band director. Yeah, he was a drummer for me, uh, and section leader, and I, he was so dedicated that there was one night we were having a tough time at the ball game, and they, they weren't behaving themselves, and so forth. Clay, he worked to get his section together and do what they're supposed to do. And he he got so aggravated he cried because he couldn't get them <laughs> he, he couldn't get them to do what he wanted them to do. So he was that kind of person, and uh, of course he's there now, and still that kind of person. Absolutely, and, yeah doing a great job with him. Yeah. So that was kind of neat that well, he was in the band all that time. And, and, and then came back to, to teach yeah. there and, and then be yeah. the head director. So how many years were you at Austin? Because I remember when I was in junior high, which was the you know mid seven, early mid seventies, you, you were there, I remember listening to your bands. And then when I was a band director, you were, you know, you were still at Austin, still doing great. I think I'd been at Austin 22 years when I left. 22? Okay. Because I had the time at, uh, at Viger that I was there. Uh -huh. and, uh, then I actually went to Austin from there. I happened to be in uh, school at Alabama for the summer and we were in some kind of, I think, maybe a lab or something. And Colonel Butler came over there and said, they're, they're starting a new school in Decatur, and uh, they're looking for a band director. You think you might be interested in that? I said, well, yeah, I might, because I was mm -hmm. from Coleman. I was from North You're Alabama. From that area of the state, yeah. So... So I was, and uh, as I said before, the superintendent had been principal at the school I was going to school at in Coleman, had actually dated his daughter a couple of times. Yeah, you, so yes, he knew yeah. me, and uh, I don't know, I won't tell you what he knew about me, but <laughs> anyway, 
he kind of knew me, so mm -hmm. we hit it off pretty well. And uh, yeah. he hired me for that job. Yeah. Well, you know, that, that makes me think. And, you know, have, having been a band director myself and an administrator, um, you know, you look at resumes, and, and a resume only tells you so much. Mm -hmm. And when you go to hire somebody, you know, if it's if it's somebody you know, or if it's somebody who comes highly recommended by someone you respect, to me that always made more difference than a name on a resume. Mm -hmm. and, and people yeah. say, you know, it's not what you know, it's who you know. Well, if that's right, then then know people. So you know the, the relationships that you built, and then when it came time to, to hire for a job, they already knew you, they liked you, you know, they they. They knew what to expect. So um, I think there's a lesson there for, for, for young people who are looking for a job, build, you know, build those relationships. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's for sure. And I know you, you had some pretty successful people that came through the program and then went to be, you know, went into music later. Uh, uh, Be Becky Rogers Warren, for example, who yeah. had just done great thing. They had a great career in Alabama. Uh, moved to what North, North Dakota? North Dakota, I believe. Is it? Yeah, it's somewhere up there where it's really yeah. cold. And, and continued to do just a fabulous yeah. job. I didn't know until just recently that she had come through your band. But uh, her husband was a band director there. A very fine one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Very very fine band director. But she she married after she got up there. She was single, mm -hmm. I think, when she left and married, mm -hmm. met him and they, they got married. Yeah. So what, what are some of the things, of course, you, you mentioned being in an area, in an area where there are really good families, really professional parents, smart kids, and, you know, getting those smart kids in the program. What are some of the other things that would kind of, if somebody said, what was your secret of success at Austin? What are some of the other things that you did that sort of, you know, gave you a leg up? I guess a little bit of success breeds success. Mm -hmm. And when we were able to go the first couple of times with basically a junior high band, and and do well enough to get a two at state contest. Mm -hmm. um, said something about our ability and um, just continued to build from there. I got to play some music that I really enjoyed. Uh, you know, yes, you did some some of those transcriptions. That... Yeah, a lot of people don't do transcriptions anymore, and I'll tell you. One of the things, one of the reasons is they don't have the clarinets to do it. Because the clarinet's going to get the violin part and uh, and saxes, of course. And uh, unless you've really got good sections there, you can't do transcriptions. So when we had section rehearsals, I spent most of my time with, with the clarinets. I had section yep. leaders and they did it, but sometime I would come in and listen and be there with them too. And uh, I really pushed that. And of course, we also, the uh, Cater High had always used cornets instead of trumpets. Okay. And I uh, did not know that. Huh? I followed suit with that. And I think that had a lot to do with the the more mellow quality. The mellow, uh -huh. that, that conical bore, yeah. 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 And uh, we used cornets the whole time I was there. Wow. And, uh, I had some trumpets. I had some that, you know, they wanted to play trumpet and they were going to play trumpet and they were good enough to <laughs> play. <laughs> yeah. But uh, uh, basically we used cornets for the section. Yeah. You know, and I, I remember coming through junior high, you know, what a lot of the music, it would actually say first cornet, second cornet, and then right. there'd be a, 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 an entirely different trumpet 
apart. I mean, the, the two were looked at as yeah. entirely different instruments, which really they are. And, when you look uh, at the service bands, they use cornets. Whether they still do today or not, I don't know. I haven't seen them in so long. But uh, they they did, and that was... Well, that was my reason for, for doing that anyway. And of course, that's that's such an, an important section. You mentioned the clarinets. And then, you know, you got your trumpets and to have that kind of sound with everybody on a cornet, and have that mellow sound. Um, so I guess that had a lot to do. You know, you, you, you mentioned trying to develop the band sound that you were looking for, you know, going to state contests, listening to other bands and and trying to figure out what it was you wanted that band to sound like. Yeah. And uh, and obviously you got it figured out. Well, I we got it figured out pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> Cert uh, certainly did, certainly did. Uh, any other words of wisdom for those, uh, especially those younger directors that are, you know, trying to find their footing Maybe a little discouraged, you know, here or there. You've got to, some, got to get some kids that uh, are pretty sharp. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, that's in that test and so forth will kind of give you an idea uh, whether they are or not whenever they're beginners. Uh, that and some success breeds success and once they have achieved that then they feel like we've got to do this because of last year they they made a one mm -hmm. we got to keep that tr tradition up so tradition, yeah and um we went to some contests over over in Georgia, where I am now, and uh, did well. And uh, heard a lot of good bands while we were there, and we we did pretty well also. I think one one time we got a two. Uh, other than, other than that, we got ones. I think whenever we went to those. Uh, contests that were not state contests, they were national contests. Mm -hmm. So um, that's about it, I guess. <laughs> uh, Frank, I've forgotten where where all you were. Where, uh, what well, I, yeah, I, I grew up in, in Northport, graduated Duskaloosa County High School, went to Jacksonville State. Uh, when Dave Walters was my band director there. And then my first job was in Montgomery at Goodwin Junior High. We fed into Lee and Jeff Davis High Schools and then went to Pazitz Middle School. was there for eight years and uh, decided I wanted an easier job, so I became a middle school assistant principal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you wanted an and, easier job. Okay. Yeah, and and. And, and and when you know when I'm presenting to school principals, you know, and I use that line, and everybody chuckles like, "Oh yeah, the easier job, Miss Good," but it really was, you know, being a band director. If you're a good band director, it's not easy. It's not, <laughs> and and you have so much in the way of responsibility that uh, a lot of people don't realize. I I remember I, I don't know if you ever knew Don Cornut. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, when when I was taking those administrative courses, uh, he was principal at Homewood Middle School, and we'd meet for breakfast from time to time. He'd say, Frank, being an administrator, he says, it's just like running your band program on a larger scale. He says, you have your band boosters. I have my PTO. You have to budget for instruments. I have to budget for my school. He says, uh, you know, you recruit students, I recruit teachers. He said, it's the same thing 
just a larger scale. And he was absolutely right. Only I found out when I, as an administrator, you have more people helping you. You know, you've got a secretary, you got a bookkeeper. You know, yeah. You're a bad director, you don't have any of that. It's it's That's it's right. all it's all on you. You gotta have a student that's your secretary or <laughs> or something, you know. And uh yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I felt extremely fortunate coming through to, you know, it, it was in the day where, you know, you're going to state contest and you're hearing your band, you're hearing Glenn Spiller's band, you're hearing Jerry Bobo's band, you're hearing yeah. Johnny Jacobs bands, Dan Havely's bands. And uh, and so now that, you know, you, the, the, these are the folks that I'm, you know, in, interviewing for, uh, you know, the members of the Phi Beta Mu Hall of Fame. Um, and, you know, hearing, hearing those bands, hearing that band sound, uh, just being to hear, hearing some of the chatter in the hallway, as some of you are talking to each other and some of us younger ones are listening in on, you know, what, what kind of conversations do the best of the best have, you know, where is their focus? And it just, yeah, it made, made a tremendous difference, made a lasting difference and, uh, and that's why I think what we're doing here is so important in, in uh, you know, getting getting this on film, so to speak, where, uh, it, you know, it can be a, a lasting legacy for, uh, for, for many years to come. Well, what, for what it's worth, take whatever you uh, think it's worth of what I've said. Use it if you want to <laughs> or throw it away. <laughs> because <laughs> oh, I, I surely don't claim to be uh, the smartest guy in the world <laughs> um, but um, hard work will get you pretty far get you alive. that's right well Bill again thanks so much and thanks to those who are tuning in to watch this and the other Phi Beta Mu Legacy Project interviews mm -hmm. Uh, this is Frank Buck, and it has been my pleasure to, to talk to my friend, Bill Bruner. Frank, thank you so much. Uh, I appreciate what you're doing.